For this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the three types of attachments that are blocking your manifestations from happening. I'm going to show you exactly what to do instead. Welcome back to another video. My name is Aaron and I help people expand their consciousness. Now in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the three different types of attachments that are blocking manifestations from coming into your life. Understand a lot of reality has to do with vibrational resonance. So this is something that I have also shared before. The vibration of wanting something is different than the vibration of having something. If you say, I really, really want this, that implies a sense of lack. The vibration of having it is almost like a complete, it is, it's a completely different radio station. One is emphasizing I lack, therefore I want. The other one is saying I have it, I am it. So they're two different forms of understanding manifestation process. Now the thing that a lot of times keeps people from moving into the having vibration is they are attached to things that aren't actually serving them. They're attached to their thing, the things I'll be sharing with you in this video. So understand that a lot of raising our vibration as well is about recognizing our vibration where it's at and then letting go of the things that are bringing us down, letting go of the things that are keeping us in low vibration. So sometimes, for example, for me, this was back in the day taking something like Adderall that was keeping me in low vibration or even something like smoking weed. Although a lot of people think that it's a very high vibrational thing, it depends on where you are on the vibrational scale. If you are at the, because weed itself resonates at about 300 on that scale of zero to a thousand with a thousand being the highest and the lower vibrations being like 200 and below. So for sometimes it may make you feel better, but the idea is that at a certain point, once you do the inner work, your vibration will raise. And when that happens, when you do certain things, it'll actually bring your vibration down. So if you were to remain attached to that thing and keep doing it because it served you for a period of time, it would keep you in low vibration, unable to get to the higher state of being. And now understand, the more you raise your vibration, the easier things manifest. The more you raise your vibration, the easier things manifest. Now, before I get to those three things as well, the other thing I want to share with you is that in this reality, we forget that we are eternal spiritual beings having temporary human experiences. We forget that and we forget that we are also being guided by our higher self. Our higher selves are guiding us. So what happens is the job of our ego is to align. The job of our ego is to identify what it likes, what it dislikes, identify a certain sense of direction to commit and use willpower. That's the job of the ego. But when it comes to this, sometimes what will happen is people will assume that their ego has to do everything. The ego has to do everything. And when that happens, the ego will feel like it literally has a burden on its back. It'll feel like it's heavy and it's hard for it to actually do things. So the key is remembering as well, we are guided through this process. You don't have to remain attached to things that aren't serving you. You can be guided and understand that you are guided. You are guided from your higher self. You are guided from spirit, whatever labels you want to give it. But that recognition makes this process so much easier. Now, the first type of attachment that people uh, have trouble with and that I see so often is the attachment to thinking. We are attached to our thoughts. We not only are attached to our thoughts, we think we literally are our thoughts. If we have some negative thoughts, we may say, I'm a negative person. We then give that thought, which is just a thought that's coming through the mind. We then identify it and we then relate to it in a way to where we then internalize it. And the thing is, we are not our thinking. We may think thoughts, but we are not our thoughts. Now, the other part of manifestation I want to talk about with this is many people have a cluttered mind. Their mind is just on autopilot. Their mind is just has so many different things in it that they can't actually focus on one thing at a time. And what happens is when we have such chaotic thoughts, when they're just going in so many different directions, we can't actually gain momentum in the process of manifestation. Think about that. Also think about this. This is some, I think it's pretty cool. I read that, I always promote the book Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda. In that book, you have some enlightened gurus and Paramahansa Yogananda meets them on his path to enlightenment. 
Well, some of them that he meets can literally make things manifest instantly. They can do things that we would consider to be magic in our reality. And why could they do things like this? Well, the reason being, part of it, is they have such clear focus and such clear thoughts. It's just one thought, it happens. Whereas most people are like one thought, but 60 out of thousand thoughts in their mind at the same time, so it doesn't gain as much momentum. Having a clear mind and not being attached to your thoughts will help you manifest easier. Easier leap. Easier. <laughs> so this is about understanding that process of observing our thoughts more often because then you make more space through your mind and through your through your energy field for things like this to happen. But attachment to thinking will stop manifestation in its tracks, especially when you start to over when you start to identify with overthinking or you start to overly identify with your thoughts in general. So observing your thoughts for just five or 10 minutes a day has changed my life so much. When I wake up every morning, I observe my thoughts for five or 10 minutes minimum. I normally have a se separate space that I go to to do this. I sit down and I observe them as they come in, as they go out. The trick to this, by the way, is to observe from a neutral point of view and to not try to control not try to control, allow them to be there. The paradox is that when you allow your thoughts to be there, they naturally begin to go away and they start to calm down. So realize that you may think thoughts, but you are not your thoughts. And if you are attached to you thinking you are your thoughts, you're an overthinker, you're a negative person, you're shy, you're all of these things, then your identity is getting lost with something that is not even you. And that's keeping you from being what you want, from being who you want. Even labels, think about it. You may have the thought, I am this. Like back in the day, I was a shoe salesperson. I am a shoe salesperson, which then immediately is a label that limits me being a YouTuber, limits me expressing myself. These labels limit. And if we think we are these labels, then guess what? It starts to limit us as well. Because the other part of this as well for manifestation is our self-image. How do we see ourselves? We will always do everything we can to remain consistent to the way that we define ourselves. And if there's a certain label we define ourselves as, subconsciously we keep that thing going. So attachment to thinking. Let go of your attachment to thinking and you will find that things happen so much easier. Now the second type of attachment that is blocking your manifestations from happening is your attachment to outcome. Your attachment to outcome. Now, the mind thinks it needs to understand exactly how everything should happen. But you see, the thing is, that's not the mind, that's not the actual ego's job. The ego's job is to focus and to figure out what. So think about that. It's like, you want to, say you wanted to go full-time doing what you love. Okay, what is it? Going full-time doing what you love. Now the idea is to start taking action and do things that you're passionate about in the direction of that. But if you in, have in your mind a blueprint of exactly how it should happen, that many times will block other opportunities from coming to your life. Imagine somebody that wants to attract a relationship into their life. Imagine somebody that's like, okay, this is how it's gonna happen. I'm gonna go to this, this shop, I'm gonna see this type of person, they're gonna look at me a certain way, and then this is gonna happen, this, this big blueprint. Well, what you've then done is you limited yourself so that the only possible way for this person to come into your life is this one blueprint inside of your own mind. Instead of understanding that maybe there's ways it could get brought into your life even more magical than you can even imagine from the ego self. Think of this analogy as well. I heard this from Bashar a long time ago. This is your ego mind. This is your higher mind. The best case scenario for your ego mind, which is its ceiling, is the floor of the higher mind. So your higher mind can think of even more amazing things. And maybe if you got out and you did things you haven't done before, you'd put yourself in uncertain situations to where then magical things could come to you. A lot of times people are on autopilot, doing the same things every day, experiencing the same things, therefore getting the same result. You get into a new situation, you allow things to come to you much easier. So don't be attached to how things happen. Don't be attached and think that that's your job. Your job is to focus on your state of being. The true degree of change is not whether anything on the outside changes, it's whether you've changed on the inside, even if the outside remains the same. The paradox is that once you get to that state, the outer reflection can't help but change because it's just a mirror, just doing its job. 
the mirror of reality. It's reflecting back to us our internal states of being, our internal beliefs, our internal self-image, and the story that we tell ourselves consistently. You change that story, you change your life. So attachment to outcome, how things happen. Let go. And here's the thing too. When something happens that you think is going to negate your manifestation, don't give it the meaning that it means it's not going to happen. Give it the meaning that it's going to lead you to something else that's going to put you in the direction of attaining it. There's many people that have been through a failure, another failure, another failure, and then they succeed. But the thing is, if you give up on the second one or the first one, you don't actually get to that that actual part. It's like that meme, if you've ever seen it, where there's somebody that's with a pitchfork getting to the end where there's gold going through like the ditch or going through the um, underground. So close, but he gives up right before he's about to strike gold. But there's someone else that's almost there that's doing the same thing that keeps on going. Now, in the same way, trust that process. Trust that process. Understand, you don't have to understand all the blueprint of the mind of exactly how it's going to happen. Let the universe surprise you. Let your higher self surprise you. Let it be a surprise. Don't try to control everything. Controlling everything is what causes resistance. Controlling everything is what causes suffering. That's why Buddha said, the true degree of suffering, all suffering comes from attachment. All suffering comes from attachment. Now, the third type and form of attachment that is ruining your manifestations is your attachment to people. It's your attachment to people. I see a lot of people that have an attachment to how someone else act, acts, like who they are, not liking certain parts of their personality, their family members talking them a certain way. There's all these rules about how certain people have to be. And sometimes, <clears throat> I was talking about some of this about this the other day, sometimes, for example, say somebody doesn't want you to do something. Sometimes, subconsciously, you will rebel against somebody that doesn't want you to do something and you may do the opposite just because they don't want you to do it. Because there is a, a feeling there, like a feeling of resistance that you feel from the other person. So you're just doing what you think is the path of least resistance, but really it's the opposite. And you're just doing it because it's almost like a, an assertion of your own power. You don't want to give your power away, so you do it. Now, the reason I say this is because people are attached to how other people are. Many people are attached to how things happen. And the key to this is being aware that when you can let go of the how and you can just trust the process, things will happen even more magically for you. But let people be the way that they are. I remember, especially back in the day, I was so focused on trying to change everyone else. I remember when I went through my spiritual awakening, I was so excited to learn about how our thoughts create our reality and how we're eternal spiritual beings of intemperate human experiences, that I went out and I shared this information with everybody. And I was so attached to how they thought about it. I was so attached to whether they got on board, they started meditating, and people didn't do that. It's almost like people could feel the resistance from me of me wanting to have, direct them down a certain way because I've changed so much that I wanted other people to experience that powerful transformation. But I was trying to control them instead of allow them to come to their own conclusions. Then what I did is I said, you know what? I'm just gonna focus on myself. I spent years focusing on myself. Then I started my YouTube channel. Now that everything gets a certain amount of attention to where those people that used to think what I was doing is weird, think what I'm doing is really cool and they wanna know more. So the reason I say this is I'm now not attached to what they think. I'm not attached to what they do, but yet they're doing, everything's being gravitated towards me easier than ever. So don't be, attached to what people do. Don't be attached to who comes to you. I see so many people get attached to outcome, to expectation, and to controlling other people. And that's what keeps them from actually manifesting what they want and allowing things to take its natural course. Allowing things to take its natural course. So trust this process. Now, what do you do instead of all of this? What do you do instead of trying really hard because understand as well that when we have these forms of attachments, a lot of times we put them on this big old pedestal and then we vibrationally separate ourselves from it. We make it very important. The moment we make it important is we are saying that it's not linked up to our current identity. It's up there and that keeps us vibrationally separate from it. Now, the solution to this is to instead see these things as natural. You are the type of person that is carefree. Change at the identity level from the self-image. 
Understand that you are not needy. You're not a needy person. You don't need other people to conform to all your beliefs. You don't need to control everything in reality and try to make everything the way that you think it could. It has to be. Be the kind of person that can relax. Be the kind of person that it's natural for you to let the universe do its thing. Yes, you can still take action. You can still do what you're passionate about. But be aware of this, this balance, of walking the balance between, this middle way of one taking action, doing what you're passionate about, having a vision, have a vision, but don't be attached to how that vision manifests. And don't be attached to every step along the way of every little part of it. Let go. Let go of the outcome. Let go of the attachment to thinking. Let go of thinking you need to do everything. Let go of how people are and let people be. The moment you get to this level of surrender, is the moment that everything in your life will begin to change. The pathway and the cure to everything I'm sharing with you today is simply surrender, letting go, surrender, letting go, let go, release. Ask yourself, sometimes you might believe that you need to control everything. Maybe something happened in the past, you had to control it. I realized that my ego had a very strong inclination to control different aspects of my business, different aspects of my life. I realized this when I was in Costa Rica like a year ago. And what I realized is that I had such an attachment to how things happen that it was developed from when I went through pain in my childhood. Because in a moment I decided this is how I have to be. I have to control things in order for me to survive. So therefore I kept that on autopilot. I had to control every aspect of my business. Then I went full time doing what I love through controlling my willpower and all these things. Now I thought, oh, I always have to do this. But then I realized, wait, I can let go. I can surrender and allow. Surrender and allow. So you might also be at a certain place to where maybe what you need to hear is to have a vision, to take action and be passionate about that vision. Or maybe you need to hear to surrender and let go because you're trying too hard. You're trying to control everything. And most likely if you clicked on a video that's about the three types of attachments, you might be in that place. But the key to this, remember, is let go and surrender. Trust the higher mind to bring these things to you. Trust that you can allow people to be. Trust that you don't need to control every aspect of your life. Trust that the vision that you have can come to manifest. Trust that the higher self is guiding you and the universe is supporting you every step along the way. And trust that anytime something happens that you think is not a part of the plan, realize it is a part of the plan. It's just putting you into a new into a new direction or to a direction that gets you there easier that reframe changes everything so something else that I have I'm gonna go and link it below is a letting go meditation that you can listen to for 21 days I think it'll transform your life it'll change your energetic field as well that'll be in the top of the description box read the comments to see what is possible there it really helps in this process of surrendering as well because you might not not even be aware of it but you might allow something even more amazing to manifest by letting Go. Now, the other thing as well is hit the like button if you like this video. If you want me to make more videos like this on letting go or on some of these concepts that I'm talking about where I kind of consolidate three things into one. And then hit the notification bell if you haven't already so you see the daily vids. It's the only way YouTube will show you the daily vids that I do. And uh, I'm excited to share some more with you. So with that being said, hope you enjoyed this video. Peace, much love, and namaste.